Well, it's finally here. A RGB backlighting keyboard for Mac users. Matthias's Apple keyboard. Everyone was stoked when it was finally announced at this year's CES, and I immediately pre-ordered one when I saw it. You can order the wired one for $100 and the wireless one for $140. So how does this stack up against the normal wired keyboard that Apple offers? Well, the box has a great plastic handle that you can use to carry around your amazing keyboard, just to let the world know that you have an amazing backlit Apple keyboard. And when you open it, you get a small instruction manual as well as the keyboard itself. From a glance, the keyboard almost looks identical to Apple's own keyboard, but you'll soon start to notice a few differences while playing around with it. The color of the keyboard is a little off. What would be smooth aluminum body now feels like this little harsh plastic feeling thing. This keyboard is also more heavier and thicker than Apple's own keyboard and sits a little higher as well. It only features one USB 2.0 rather than two that Apple has, and it doesn't come with a USB extension like Apple's does either. Other than that, the keyboard feels fine. After using it for a few days, I hardly started to notice a lot of those things. Sure, now I gotta remember to use the right side of the keyboard to plug in a thumb drive now, but why would you use a USB 2.0 for ever transferring data anyway? You're just better off plugging it in to the Mac's USB 3.0 peripherals. Also, the USB 2.0 did not work for me. I plugged in my external hard drive and I noticed that it would just keep restarting it. It would never open up on the Mac and so I just ended up having to remove it. Kind of got stuck for a little bit so I had to kind of pull it out with a little bit of force which was kind of scary. Then all of a sudden the keyboard just stopped working. The lights were still on and I could push any of the buttons but nothing would happen. I'd push escape or return and it was just not responding to any of the key pushes. So I had to unplug the keyboard and plug it back in and started working again, which is just really weird. Now the only USB 2.0 device that actually did work for me was this USB microphone that I'm using right now to record this narration. But other than that, it won't really work for anything else. So buttons feel smooth and I hardly notice too much of a difference other than the travel of the keys does feel a bit mushy, although I'm sure they'll loosen up over time. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. How about that backlighting? And, well, it's not that great. Sadly, there are some issues here with the keyboard that I received. For comparison, I'm going to use the only backlit keyboard that Apple makes, which is on the MacBook Pro. And I can't help but notice that it's not as bright as Apple's. Also, some of the lights don't even illuminate the full key. They seem kind of off at some points towards the perimeter of the keyboard, but looks pretty decent towards the middle. Also, I'm a little disappointed that the RGB lighting feature is tied to a scroll wheel along the back of the keyboard. I really wish the keyboard would be able to change colors on its own, but that's not happening here. Now, in order to turn on the lights, you have to hold down the dedicated keyboard light button and press the plus or minus key in order to fix the lights to your desired brightness. Although I really wish they could have just made dedicated bright and dim keys like they are on Apple's MacBooks. Other than that, all the other dedicated Apple Function keys work as you would expect them to. So should you buy Matthias's $99 Apple keyboard? Maybe. I mean, if you can get over the fact that it does come with flaws, it's still a backlit Apple keyboard with the Function keys that you need to take full advantage of Apple's software. But for $99, you're paying more than what some really good and awesome looking RGB keyboards that are offered out there already. For example, Razer's keyboard will work just fine with Mac OS, except you just can't do all of the configuring that you would normally do on a PC. You also won't have those dedicated keys to help you adjust the brightness, volume level, as well as control your music when you easily need to. So if you really need those keys to help navigate around your Mac, then you may pay the extra money. Alright, thanks guys for watching this quick little video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, and if you didn't, let me know why in the comments below. If you want to see me review Matthias' wireless backlit keyboard, then let me know. I'm debating on whether or not to get it because I can't say that I'm easily impressed with this one. Anyways, let me know in the comments. And I'll be making another video soon about connecting electric dumps for playing Rock Band on the Xbox One. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. Anyways, thanks guys, and I'll see you later.